What's going on guys, it's Hi, and if you've seen my film videos over the years, then you probably know that I personally prefer finer grain films. And when it comes to fine grain films, tubular grain or tea grain films are among the finest. Of the various T-grain film stocks available on the market, I've shot with Kodak T-Max 400 and Ilford Delta 400 the most. I like both of these, but have never really determined which one was better for my personal use. Well, I figured it's time to figure that out by putting these two film stocks head to head and seeing how they differ from one another when exposed to the same conditions. To do this, I loaded the film stocks into two of my Nikon film cameras, but made sure to use the same lens between the two bodies. This is because with analog photography, the camera body itself doesn't necessarily affect the final rendering of the film stock, assuming that the camera is functioning properly. However, the biggest contributor in terms of camera gear is the lens, which can drastically affect things such as the contrast and sharpness of the final image. Because of this, I made sure to swap one lens between my two camera bodies, and this is to ensure that the variations between even the same lens line would not be present in my comparison. The same settings were used for the two cameras when taking similar photos, so in terms of the photo taken aspect of this comparison, I did my best to create one-to-one -one comparisons. In post, these film stocks were developed using the same chemicals and the same developing process. They were also scanned with the same scanner and the same scanning process. All of the photos that you're about to see are as scanned and unedited. All that being said, I am not perfect, and there is a degree of human error that goes into all of this. Although I did my best to keep the conditions the same for both film stocks, there are things that are just out of my control and can contribute to minor differences. The results that I got are very particular to the equipment that I use and the conditions around the entire process. You should not watch this video and think that my results represent these film stocks as a whole because there are so many other factors that can contribute to getting different results. Everything that you get from this video should be taken with a grain of salt, so again, don't take my results as the definitive answer. Instead, use it in a general sense and as a starting point for your own personal experiments. Now that we got that disclaimer out of the way, let's compare these two film stocks. When I analyze a film stock, there are three main categories that I consider. Grain, sharpness, and contrast. Let's first talk about grain. For me, what's important with the grain is on a simple perceptual level. By this I mean that if I were to look at an image, will I notice the grain right away? Will the grain detract my attention from the actual subject? Grain can of course add to the mood or the artistic vision of a photographer, but for my personal use, I really like to have a grain that's inconspicuous and really not noticeable at all. Relating this to either of these film stocks, I personally think that they do this very well. Take a look at these images for example. When I analyze for grain, I like to shoot subjects that have a lot of uniformity and not a lot of detail, something like this building. In this photo, we largely have a bunch of lines, and in between those lines are just empty spaces with no discernible detail. If I used a high grain film, it would be really easy to make out the grain on a photo like this. But as you can see, everything is very smooth, and you wouldn't even really think about the grain in this case. Another good way to examine grain is by shooting with a wide aperture to get shallow depth of field. This picture was taken at f1.8 at minimum focusing distance, so the depth of field was almost non-existent. With this image, I want you to not pay attention to what's in focus, but the blur because this is where the grain would be more noticeable. Again, the grain on both films did a very good job at being inconspicuous. It is really only noticeable when you start to look for it. For being 400 speed, the grain with these two film stocks are so fine, and possibly among the finest of all films. At a glance, I really don't notice the grain at all with either of these film stocks. It's like it's not even there. These films might as well be digital. Only when I start to really zoom in do I notice the grain, but to me this is kind of a useless statement because who's really going to be zooming in 4, 5, 600% on an image? So to me, the perceptual grain of these two film stocks are so similar that I can't really say that one is better than the other. They are pretty much interchangeable in my personal opinion. I want to know that for this video, I can't analyze every photo that I took with these rolls of film for the sake of saving some time. If you want to see larger, higher resolution, side-by-side -side comparisons of all the images that I took, check out the link below in the description which leads you to my website. Next, let's talk about sharpness. As you can see, Kodak boldly advertises that Kodak T-Max is the world's sharpest film right on the packaging. Whether or not this is true, I can't really say, but I'm sure that Kodak did some measurements and testings for them to be able to make this claim. The best I can say is that Kodak T-Max 400 has always been among the sharpest films that I've ever shot, but how does it compare with Ilford Delta 400? After examining my images, I don't think that I can say outright that one film is sharper than the other, because I don't feel that my approach was the best to determine sharpness. I shot the entirety of these films handheld. Because of this, there was some minor movement in between each shot, and this can affect the focal plane, the depth of field, and just what's in focus in general. 
I think if you're interested in the sharpness of these film stocks, the best thing to do is to just head over to my website, look at the images that I've uploaded there, and determine which film is sharper for yourself. But if you're interested in my opinion, I think that I actually have to give a slight edge to Ilford Delta over the world's sharpest film, Kodak T-Max. To me, flipping between the images, something about Ilford Delta just pops out to me. It just looks sharper. I have a theory as to why this is, and it is in connection to our next category, contrast. If you're observing, you may have noticed that there is a noticeable difference in contrast and overall exposure between some of these examples. Ilford Delta just seems to produce a darker image, whether we are talking about contrast or exposure. If we assume that my cameras were functioning correctly, the best guess for why this would be is that one or neither of these films are not a true 400 speed film. They may be faster or slower, I don't know because I did not use a meter to test for this. But as a result, we do have a difference in exposure and contrast. In this case, I would say that I absolutely prefer Delta 400 because of images like this. When backlit, there is a stark difference in how the film stocks render a scene. Take a look at the sky. With Delta, because the entire image is darker, there is information in the entire scene. Whereas with T-Max, the image is so bright that the entire sky is blown out. It is all white and no clouds in sight. The same is true for this image. Pay attention to the sky. Again with Delta, it is dark enough for you to make out that there are some clouds in the sky and that there is some texture there. T-Max is again white. These next images were purposely backlit, and again, such a big difference. T-Max is so overexposed and low contrast while Delta holds most of the scene intact. Only the brightest part of the sky where the sun is, is it completely blown. Even when not backlit in simple images like this, we can see that there is a tonal difference due to the exposure. The wall is noticeably darker with Delta. Taking this back to sharpness, I think that because Delta produces a darker, more contrasty image, this gives me the perception that it is sharper. The contrast between tones helps separate and define edges, which makes them more easily noticed. Based on the images I have, I would say that this is the biggest difference between these two film stocks. To be honest with you, I am a big fan of Kodak T-Max 400. I would even say that it is my favorite 400 speed, maybe even my favorite film stock of all time. I like it so much that I buy it in bulk and roll it myself, and I use this as an everyday walk around film. Prior to doing this video, I actually thought that Kodak T-Max 400 was going to absolutely own Ilford Delta 400, but I think that the comparison actually proved otherwise. In terms of grain, I think it's a toss up. Like I said, the two film stocks are so perceptually similar that they are pretty much interchangeable. In terms of sharpness, this is a bit iffy and really more testing is needed. Next time, maybe I'll just use a tripod for everything and take pictures of static subjects so that we can see exact side-by-side -side images and compare sharpness in fine details. The big eye-opener in all of this was the difference in contrast and exposure. Because Delta produces a darker image, it provides more dynamic range and allows me to have much more room to work with the files in post. With T-Max, some of the files had highlights that were so blown and clipped that there is really nothing to be done. There is nothing to recover. This aspect alone has really made me reconsider Kodak T-Max 400 being my favorite film stock and if I really want to use it as an everyday film. I'm going to have to do further testing with these two film stocks and I suggest you do the same. Again, my comparison is not perfect and my results do not definitively represent these film stocks as a whole. If you're interested in these film stocks, you should really shoot them for yourself and see what works best for your personal use. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it around. If you have any thoughts, leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content and head over to my website to see all of the images from these rolls of film. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.